All right, so actually with this one, um, I'm now working with the Elastic Compute Cloud. Uh, I believe in my Solutions Architect book, that's going to be 3.3 in terms of uh, exercises, num exercise numbers. But um, what I'm going to do here is load a Windows Server 2012 instance. So basically how you want to get here is you go to your EC2 console. Then go to your instances. Then launch your instance. Then search for the instance. You can also obviously launch the Linux instances there. Um, it's pretty simple but because you're using SSH in the Linux case you're going to have uh, more of an issue with generating keys but we're working with the Windows version here select your version for this we're going to want to use the uh, instance type T2 medium And the configuration here, you want it on your default VPC. You want it to be, you want it to be assigned the public IP because we're going to have to remote into it using the remote desktop protocol. All right, and we're going to add some script behavior here to add the temporary folder. And just using the make directory command in this case. tags I've actually done this previously so we're just going to save it security group all right now it does it automatically we select RDP or if we wanted to we were doing Linux, we'd select SSH and then we'd switch the port right, the port to 22. In this case, because we're using a uh, Windows server system, we're going to use the desktop protocol port uh, 3389. And we want the source to be my IP so that I can remote in from it. So this is the honor system internet. Uh, it doesn't mean just like, you know, body me with stuff. So, um,. Yeah, we'll see if people can be trusted not to DDoS me. We'll see what happens. We want to use an existing security. Well, there. Okay, there we go. We're going to use the existing security group, um, which I've created previously. And. Looks like it's all set. We're going to launch it. Now it's going to want a key pair. So I have a previous key pair here. And we want to use it. We're going to launch the instance. It's going to take a second, all right? And go back to EC2. All right, now it's 
initializing. So the major major difference if you're using the Linux option, which was the previous lab, is you have to SSH in. It's going to download a, a PEM file, which then you have to use Putty Gen inside of Putty to modify in a PPK file. That was a key difference if you're using the, the Linux example to remote into it. You'd have to use Putty to actually do it. Putty as if you're remoting into the same stuff you can use to remote into a router or using console cable, obviously. Now we want to get password. Okay, so we have to artificially we have to wait four minutes. That's an eternity. But yeah, if you're doing the previous the 3.1 lab in this book, um, the, the only the only issue is going to require you to use Putty, and that's going to be somewhat challenging. Let me see if I can kind of elucidate what I'm talking about here while we're waiting. I'm going to go into Putty. So for if I was doing this on Linux, I would literally use the, the IP. And the port's already already there. And this is where you would select your key once putty gen has gone through and converted to a ppk file you browse for it here you open it it authenticates you allowing you to access your linux instance um, so that's the only real key difference another problem i ran into is in the 3.1 lab there's an incorrect command indicating uh you SSH in, right, and you have your prompt there. You're looking at it. The book tells you sudo yum update dash security dash y. The command's not found. So obviously it's Linux. So all you have to do is refer here to this command and it applies the security updates, which um, I believe is going to apply the uh, basically the group policy that it's like a group policy update command. As far as I know. But the, the key pair uh, in that lab is really the only challenge that, that took me a bit. Okay, so it should be ready. All right, and so you got your RSAT all hashed and crazy, okay? And you just decrypt your password. That's your administrator password. All right, and download your remote desktop file. Open your session. And I'm gonna have to get the screen cap software to actually actually capture this. Oh yeah, all that stuff we said about Putty is not gonna not gonna show up. I gotta close some of this crap.
Okay. There we go. And then we got some knob one working on that's right, multifaceted. Let's close this. So I'll just show you the putty while I mess with this. This is what I was talking about. You go in and there's your there's your private key for authentication. That's where you would browse and up and, and upload it so you can actually get access to the system on, on a Linux system. Probably not that not that crazy. All right, there we go. I just start. I just all it all I did was I authenticated as administrator. Nothing uh, insane. It's gonna take it a minute. Just logging in. It's a Windows system. What do you expect? And we need to check if our script ran correctly to create the temp file on the system. All right, so basically, all we did was run a simple make directory command, right? And this actually, by the way, I'm going to do all of my server labs in here. So I'll be able to demonstrate at least some of what I know how to do in terms of setting up a DHCP and DNS server. Uh, the rest of your server stuff is really simple. It's not difficult. So I can at least demonstrate where where you find that information. Because I don't know, honestly, if anybody knows out there where I can get some DMs, okay, and I don't have to pay for them, that will be, that'll be awesome. Because once I got out of school, I deleted them. I had like gigs, like 32 gigs worth. It was killing my hard drive. And I wanted to play Ramble 6. So there we go. All right. File Explorer. So we're just going to find the file here. And there it is. It's been, you know, obviously been created. But yeah, that's, um, that's how you do this. That's how you set up a server instance and connect to it. So you'd be running this on the back end, you know what I mean?